In this episode, we're going to talk about what you can do to prevent your employees from going off on their own and stealing your dog training business model. Stick with me. So your dog training business is really starting to cook with gas and you've hired somebody and you've taught them everything you think they need to know to help you sell your dog training programs, to help train the client's dogs, to help run group classes and everything else that you are hoping that they would do to give you a little bit of a break to start working on your business rather than having to work in your business. And what happens? They turn around and stab you in the back and they take everything that you taught them and they go out and they start their own dog training business and what's worse is they do it in your hometown so now you've just trained your competition it's it's terrible but i've got some strategies i want to share with you that i think can reduce because you'll never completely eliminate the possibility of that happening even with a non-compete they're notoriously hard to enforce but i have some other strategies that i think can really help but first You know, if you've got a dog training business and you want to get to the next level, if you're tired of lying in bed wondering, you know, how do I get more dog training clients? How do I get desperate dog owners to pick up the phone and call me? I still feel that Google ads used to be called Google AdWords, now called Google ads is one of the best ways to get those desperate dog owners to pick up the phone and call you. The problem is that it's insanely complicated, especially if you're in a competitive market to figure out how to run those ads without blowing through a lot of money. What we do with my company, Browning Direct, which you can learn more about at dogtrainertoolbox.com, is we provide a completely 100% done for you from soup to nuts, complete solution. We take care of everything. All you need to really do is make sure you pick up the phone. If you'd like to learn more, check out dogtrainertoolbox.com. And in the upper left-hand corner, you'll see a box that says Expert Google, Expert Google AdWords Management for Dog Trainers Only. Click on that, read through that page. If it makes sense, at the bottom, there's a link to my calendar app. You can book a free. 30 minute phone consultation with me and we'll get on the phone and find out if what we're doing with our Google ads management would help grow your dog training business. All right. So to the point, when I was a kid, they used to tell this story about the treasury department and how they would print money. I don't know if the story is true, but as the story goes, in order to prevent counterfeiters at the treasury department, they would have sub departments that were each individually responsible for individual aspects of producing the money. So there might be one department that would just specialize in the ink and figure out how to mix the ink and get the right kind of color. And another department that would specialize in the paper. And you have another department that would do the, the, the plates that would actually print the use to print the money. And then another department that was responsible for the presses themselves. And the idea was that if they compartmentalized all aspects, there was never one person who knew everything about how the money was printed. And therefore it would make it much more difficult to counterfeit the money. You're gonna wanna do the same with your dog training business. You're gonna need to compartmentalize. And that means get rid of this idea of replacing yourself in the business. Now you can do that later on, but in the early phases, you wanna compartmentalize. That means if you hire a dog trainer, their job should be just training the dogs especially if you have board and train programs, just have them do the board and trains. You don't have them sell. You don't have them answer the phone. You don't teach them anything about where or how you're advertising. Um, Maybe you hire somebody who just does sales or you hire somebody just to answer the phone. They don't need to really know anything beyond what they need just to sell in regard to actually training dogs. So don't replace yourself. What you want to do is you want to bring in people who will, who will, handle one aspect of the business and do that really, really well. Now, the other thing you want to consider is that let's say you bring somebody into your your organization, your company, and you teach them how to train a dog. It's not going to take very long, even if you try and keep it from them. Eventually, they're going to figure out what you're charging. So let's say you're charging $2,000 for a two-week board and train. The trainer, if they have aspirations of going out on their own at some point and They may not. If you can find somebody who really just has no interest in running a business and they're out there, they're just rare. But if you can find somebody, great. We're not talking about that. We're talking about the majority of people who want to learn how to become a dog trainer because in the back of their mind, they know that eventually they want to run their own dog training business. And so 
they're sitting in your in your facility training dogs for you and they know that every dog that comes in for a two-week board and train you're getting two thousand dollars and in their mind they're thinking hey i'm only getting paid a thousand dollars and the owner over here he's getting paid two thousand dollars and he's not even touching the dog so i can go out on my own start up my own dog training business and i could get that for two thousand dollars the, the the reason they're thinking that is because you haven't communicated clearly all of the expenses and the headaches and the problems and the hassles that go into running your own business. And so you really need to communicate to them how much a percentage of that gross revenue, that $2,000 goes towards paying the rent, paying for gasoline for your truck or trucks, paying for the receptionist, paying for the utility bills, um, paying for the advertising, paying for the Google ads, paying for the events that you go to, all of that. And so, they need to be infinitely aware that that full two thousand dollars is not going into your pocket. Okay, you're probably making you may be making less than they are actually. And so, the more you can make them aware of those financial realities, the the more likely they're going to get to a point where they think, hey, you know what? Maybe it is better. Maybe, maybe I've got a good thing here. Maybe it is better that I could just focus on doing the one thing that I love which is just training dogs and not have to worry about paying taxes and paying the rent and, and all these other things that I now know Mr. Boss Man or Lady Boss is having to deal with. And, and it, it may be, a, a, you, you wanna be in a position where you're basically communicating all of this um, because you wanna take that high gloss sheen off the idea that I could be making all the money. So really what they're getting is they're getting a lifestyle of being able to just be a trainer. Or if they're into sales, if they like just just the aspect of sales like me, I, I really enjoyed the selling part more than I did actually training the dogs. And I would have been probably completely happy just to have done just the sales uh, and had somebody else just handle all of the training. That would have been great for me, especially when I was starting out. Um, so you need to be clear about that. But in regard to protecting yourself, if you're not teaching them how to make sales, they only know how to train the dog or they only know how to answer the phones and book consultations, but they don't know how to sell during the in-person consultation or they don't know how to train the dog, you're going to be in a much better position. You're going to be much more protected. Again, the people who want to go off and do their, whole, their own thing, they're going to probably figure that out on their own, but let's not make it easy for them and let's not make them strong competitors against you, especially if they end up setting up shop in your hometown. Does that make sense? Let me know in the comment section below. I'd love to hear your thoughts. Talk to you soon.